Hello, this is Evangelist Dominique Moore of the Thompson Evangelistic Ministry, called, anointed, and appointed by Jesus. Here is Minister Daisy Thompson with the prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. It's because of your mercy that I'm sitting here today because I could have been cut off and gone to the grave beyond. But because of mercy, not just for me, but for millions, you have let your mercy spare them one more time. Have your way today, Lord. Bless your word. Continue to anoint Evangelist Dominique to preach it and teach the word that it will go all over the world wherever this broadcast can be heard. We thank you. We praise you. We don't want to get no higher than the feet. Your feet, Jesus. Keep us meek and humble in our heart. Help us to do what you're calling us to do. Help us not to be slow and, and not doing and being faithful like you call us. Help us to be faithful in this ministry. Lead us and guide us how you want us to carry it out. We pray that people will be healed, delivered, and set free all over the world. In the name of Jesus. That people will intercede for the lost, that they will turn to God, turn to Jesus, while the blood is still running warm in their veins. Lord, we thank you. We can't thank you enough. We can't praise you enough. Have your way today. Anoint evangel evangelist more lips of clay that she will continue to teach and preach your word to reach every soul that she can. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, once again, this is Evangelist Dominique Moore of the Thompson Evangelistic Ministry. If you've been following me on the podcast, the last time that I was on the podcast, I was speaking on this is just a test. I'm picking up with this is just a test. Every day we are battling tests, different types of tests different environments of tests but every day as a man and woman of god you are going to be battled with tests that's why first peter 4 and 12 it tells us beloved do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you we have the spirit of god on this earth and we have the spirit of the devil on this earth every single day we are being tested by both jesus is expecting for us to pass every single test that the enemy throws at us because jesus already knows that we are more than victorious and we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that loves us. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper because he is our advocate. Jesus also said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And I will send back the comforter, the teacher. He's going to help you and lead you into everything that you need to do. He's going to help you to make the right decisions according to the word of God. This is just a test. Every day we are tested. Every day we should strive to pass every single test that the enemy throws our way. Knowing that the battle isn't ours. The test isn't ours by ourselves. We have a chain of command. And if you watched and listened to me on the last podcast, I broke down who the chain of command is. The chain of command is Father God. He is the principal. The vice principal is Jesus Christ. And the teacher is the Holy Ghost. And if it was not for the help of the Holy Ghost teaching and leading me, there are so many tests that I would have failed on the first try. So I'm coming today to encourage you that this is just a test. It's just a test. 
We can pass any test that the enemy throws our way if we keep our minds Focus and stay on Jesus Christ. If we walk in the spirit, the word of God says we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The devil wants us to sin because every time he throws a test at us, it's going to always be filled with sinful things. It's going to always be a test to get us to go against the word of God. He wants us to fail this test. But we don't have to fail this test. We don't have to take that same test over and over and over just to pass it. What we have to do is stay connected to the vine. And that vine is Jesus Christ. I want to give you something to think about. I mentioned it on the last podcast. These, This acronym that I came up with for temptation. T. Tested by temptation and overcoming it. Builds your faith and confidence in Christ. Every time I take any type of test, I always want to pass that test. Whether it is an earthly test or a spiritual test. On the job that I work on now, I have to take, I have to get re-qualified every two years for the job that I currently work. If I don't pass this test, I get decertified and that affects my job. So every two years, I have to prepare and take this test. And every two years, for the last 16 years, I have been passing this test. Why? Because I study before I take the test. I take notes before I take the test. And even though it's just an earthly test, I pray. You have to do the same thing in the spiritual realm. You're going to have tests till you die. Every test that you take, you got to study, study by the word of God. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to seek after Christ. Seek after the help of the Holy Ghost so that you will be able to pass the test. You heard me say earlier that the Holy Ghost is the teacher. When we were going to school, you could, I remember there were times when I was in school, I'll speak on myself. And sometimes I would ask my classmate for help with something that I was dealing with, with the the schoolwork. But if you want to get the exact correct answer, it is always best to go to the teacher. Because sometimes your classmate, they can mean well and they can be telling you right but they not may not tell you enough of what you need to know to get the the answer right and when you take the test you still fail but if you go to the school teacher which is the holy ghost our teacher if you go to him first He can lead you in the direction of who you need to talk to so that you can get the encouragement you need to pass the test or the extra insight, spiritual insight to help pass the test. It may be three or four scriptures that the Holy Ghost specifically wants you to have come up in your spirit, have in your mind to help you through this test. He can put the right people in your life at the right time so that you can get the right answer. But we should always go to our spiritual help first before we go to people. Because at the end of the day, even if I went to that classmate and they gave me the correct answer for that one problem, they cannot take the test for me. So at the end of the day, that test is still going to fall on me and it's going to be my responsibility to make sure that I spent enough time studying and I got accurate answers so that I will pass the test. That's why we need to go to the Holy Ghost first. We need to go to our spiritual companions first before we go to people because the Bible tells you that man will fail you. So you can't depend and put all your trust in man. When I was at basic training, I remember when it was time for me to go to the shooting range. Never had fired a firearm before, and it was an M16. And I couldn't get my breathing right. 
So every time I would pull the trigger, I would breathe against the trigger instead of breathing with or pausing with pulling the trigger, I would breathe wrong. So every time I would pull the trigger and breathe wrong, the round would not go where I needed it to go. And I was so frustrated and I was worried that I wasn't going to pass this test. If I didn't pass the test, they were going to restart me out of all the problems and challenges I had at basic training. I did not want to go back to the beginning to start all the way over. And I remember having a conversation with my father and my father knew something about guns. He shot guns before. So he was able to tell me exactly what I needed to do so that I could pass the test. And when I went back to go and take the test, I qualified and I passed because I went to someone that was knowledgeable in that field. Yes, I, I did ask the instructors, but the instructors are not going to talk to you. They're boot camp instructors. They're not going to talk to you in the same care and love like your, your parents will. So even though the instructors was telling me I needed to do this and I needed to do that, I still was frustrated. So I went to my father and my father, he broke it down so that I could understand it. And I was able to understand, do like he told me. And I passed the test for the M16. I qualified and I was so happy that I passed that test. When we go through a test in the spiritual realm, we go to the Holy Ghost first. Holy Ghost, I'm having problems with this test. It may be, you may have, it may be challenging for you with your temper, or it could be you have no patience. So you're dealing with this test and you don't want to sin. You don't want to cuss. You don't want to fuss. And when we get upset, the devil will try to tempt us to do like we used to do. Cuss, uh, snap at somebody or be rude to somebody because we upset, we frustrated, but we can't do that. The Bible tells us that. The anger of man doesn't work the righteousness of God. So we have to deal with this test, come to this test in a godly spiritual way that lines up with the word of God. So just like I went to my father for a earthly issue and he was able to break it down. I would go to the Holy Ghost when I'm dealing with a test so that he can break it down and lead me to people that actually can help me. So when you're dealing with a test, we never quit. You can never quit as a child of God. Like that isn't an option. The Bible tells us that we are bought with the price, that we are not our own. So if we're not our own and we're bought with the price, Jesus Christ has bought us by sacrificing his life on the cross, then we can go to him to help us because he's already taken care of everything. He's the vice president. He knows everything. And when we have an issue and we take it to the vice president, Jesus, He's going to take it to the president or the principal. He's going to take it to him because Jesus is our advocate, and our intercessor. He's going to take it to the principal and the principal, Father God, is going to look at it. He's going to receive it from his son because his son is always in right standing with him. And he is going to give us what we need to successfully pass the test. I think sometimes what happens, we try to take a test and we don't do our part or we don't do enough of what we should do. There have been times where I've had to study for a message. I had to witness to someone or, or have a conversation with someone about God. And there were times, because I want to be transparent, there were times where I should have took more time to study. I should have took more time to seek after God so that when it was time for me to minister to someone or to speak, that I would be completely prepared to speak and pass that test. Everything is a test. When we're at home, we are, we are constantly being given tests. 
I can stay on my phone on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I can stay on my phone two or three hours and watch those things. And some of it is just going to be comical. It's not going to be anything to help my spirit. Or I can take time and put in time with God so that when it is time for me to minister, when it is time for me to pour into someone, I have done my homework so that when I pour into them, they will get what they need through the help of the Holy Ghost. And they will pass their tests and I'll pass mine. That's why it's so important. We can never, ever, ever get complacent. And that's easier said than done because we are surrounded by all of this external stimulus. TV, radio, the gym. If you have pets, if you have kids, if you have a spouse, we have all of these external influences that can actually help us to either pass the test or fail the test. And like I said, there are times where I could have applied myself more. I could have spent more time with God. And there have been times where I went and spoke and the Holy Ghost revealed to me and convicted me. You didn't spend enough time with me. You need to spend more time with me. You need to do less of this and more of that. So that when you have a test coming your way, you will be prepared and not just prepared, you will pass it. See, Jesus has passed every single test that he had to encounter and endure when he was here on this earth. He had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of that fast, the devil tried to tempt him. He passed the test. He passed the test. So we have to take the time, pray, study the word of God, spend time. Sometimes we don't even need to talk to God. We need to fast in the sense of, so I want to make sure something I say isn't taken out of perspective. There are times where we just need to hear the voice of God. We don't need to talk. We just need to fast, seek after him, be still, be quiet, and allow the Holy Ghost to pour into our spirit and lead us into what we need to know because he already knows that there's a test coming up. And he wants to give us everything that we need. But if we're constantly talking, if we're constantly moving and doing things, instead of sitting still sometime, we won't be able to hear the whisper of the Holy Ghost that is talking to us while the, ho the, while the devil is hollering, trying to distract us and get us to fail a test. I came up with these acronyms for temptation. I think I started, but I want to make sure I went through all of them. T, tested by temptation and overcoming, it builds your faith and confidence in Christ. E, everyone will be tempted. M, have the right mindset. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. P, pass the temptation. Jesus is pleased. T, Testify to others when you overcome temptation. You never know how much you are encouraging and helping others. And I've had people come back and tell me, I heard something that you said and it really encouraged me. It really motivated me to be able to just continue to go through and knowing that I'm going to come out on the other side. So testifying is so important. A. Always pray and ask Jesus for help. He is willing and able to help us be victorious. T, this temptation too shall pass. I, if you believe, then you will see that you have the strength, power, and authority through the Holy Spirit to overcome every temptation. O, our advocate Jesus has equipped us to overcome temptation. When we put on the whole armor of God, and if you don't know where the whole armor of God is in the Bible, I challenge you to go to Ephesians chapter 6 and read. 
putting on the whole armor of God. Because if you have on that entire armor, every single test that you encounter with the help of Father God, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, you are going to pass it the very first time. And now speak the word of God when you are tempted and you cannot lose. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible said that the demons tremble at the name of Jesus. So if you know the word of God, you can't lose doing a test. If you spend in time with Jesus, you're fasting, you're praying, um, when you pull up things on YouTube, you pull up things on Facebook, pull up things that will help your spirit, your spirit, not always trying to find things that will help your carnal body because this body is going to rot and decay. Our spirit is never going to die. It's going to live forever. So you want to feed your spiritual mind more than you Feed your carnal mind, your earthly mind, because spiritual food is spiritual knowledge. I say again, this is just a test. You don't have to fail. You don't have to get it wrong the first time. If you seek after Christ, if I seek after Christ, I can walk in confidence knowing that I'm going to be victorious because I've already spent time with the word of God, with the Holy Ghost, with Father God, with Jesus, I cannot lose. I am going to pass this test. A lot of things are our mindset. Negativity will destroy you on a test. Hanging around people that talk negativity will destroy you on a test. Hanging around people that have profane mouths, it will destroy you on a test. Some tests, the enemy is trying to tempt you and test you to get angry so that you can say things that you should not say. That's why it's so true to be careful of the company that you keep. Because you keep the wrong company, you're going to get the wrong influence. If you are a man of God or a woman of God, unless you are ministering or being led, why would you hang with a person that sells drugs? Why would you hang with a person that's doing illegal activities? Why would you hang with a person that's going out to the clubs and drinking and partying? That's not who you are. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. How are you going to pass the test successfully when you spent time studying the wrong thing? You spent time focusing on the wrong thing. So you got to make sure you be careful of what you allow into your spirit and into your mind. Because you only want things going into your spirit and into your mind that will help you successfully pass a test. If I am in with a, interacting with a group of people and these group of people know who I stand for, or if you're around me, you, you really, I don't even have to open my mouth. If you're around me long enough, you're going to know that I'm different because I don't cuss. I don't fuss. I don't drink to get drunk and do all these things that are against the word of God. I don't go to the clubs. I don't party. If I walk into an environment and those things are going on, I need to leave. That The test is already there. Are you going to walk into this environment and engage? Because if you do, you're sinning and you just fail the test. Or are you going to are you gonna leave that atmosphere and go into an atmosphere that would be conducive to your spirit? Because we don't want to feed this flesh. I know from experience, speaking on myself, there is nothing good in this ugly, rotten, raggedy flesh. I Now that I know the word of God, I hate my flesh. I hate it because I know that there is nothing good in it. When I had all the issues when I was in the world, I failed every test. 
that the enemy was sending my way. I failed it in the spiritual realm because it was, wasn't something that Jesus would have wanted me to do, but I passed it for the devil. The devil wants you to pass his test and he wants you to fail God's test. So now that I know to do better, I know that certain things I need to stay away from, I do. If I have a conversation or I encounter someone and they cannot hold their mouth enough to not cuss every other word. And I have been around individuals where you can't even have a three minute conversation with them without every other word is a cuss word. I will exit that conversation unless I was put there by the Holy Ghost for a specific work. Because you have to be careful of what you put in your spirit. A lot of the television shows we watch now, a lot of them got cussing in it. Just cussing for no reason. At one time, you might could find five consecutive shows where they didn't have cursing in it. Now, you can't hardly even cut the TV on. Even the commercials have cursing in them. You got to be careful of what you dump, what you feed into your spirit. Because for me, I am a direct person. I am assertive. I can be aggressive. And if you, if you've been watching me on the podcast, you can see that I can be assertive. I can be direct. I can be aggressive. So I don't want to fill my spirit with a bunch of profane talk because then the enemy is going to test me to see if he can get me to cuss or say something inappropriate when I am in a test that is trying my patience, that's trying to upset me. There are individuals that I can't interact with because I know that the test is they want me to do or say something that I have to come back for later and and apologize to them for. And then I have to repent to God if I don't pass that test. So when I encounter people that can cause me or put me in the position to fail a test, I will love them from a distance. Some of them is family members. Some of the worst people. I hate to say it like that, but let's just make the truth the truth. Some of the hardest people. To get along with, to deal with, to interact with is your family. Because some of them have no relationship with God. They don't want a relationship with God. But when they get in a situation, they want to call you. They don't believe in God. Or if they believe in God, they don't want a relationship with them. But as soon as they get in a situation, they want to keep you on the phone for an hour. I've been there. They want to text you all the time. They want to come by your house and they want to tell you about all your all their problems and they want you to pray for them. But they don't want a relationship with God. That's a test. Don't spend your whole evening speaking to somebody about their problems. And all it is, they want to vent to you nothing more, nothing less. They want to see if they can use your God to get their problem solved. And they go right back doing the same thing. You got to be careful of the company that you keep, even when it comes to family. Understand, we live in this world. People that have relationships with Christ, but we're not part of this world. We are a light on a hill. Some tests is family members can put you in a situation that will have you wondering, or should I, you'll be tempted in a way that you shouldn't be tempted. Should I do this or should I not? Or they'll put you in a situation where you tested the lie for them. Or you tested the cover up for something that they're doing because they don't want their significant other be it in a relationship or a marriage to know. And they'll try to put you in situations to test. The devil is setting it, setting it up to test to see, are you going to tell the truth? Or are you just going to get out of it? Or are you going to lie? Some tests is we don't even have to, we shouldn't even be in. We have to learn to walk away from tests that we shouldn't even be in. Don't try to take the test. Just walk away from the test. If all you need is your high school diploma to graduate, then 
If you want to take extra tests, you can. I remember the classes that I exempted that I could have went on and took the test for science. I could have went on and took the test for English. But I didn't have to take those tests because I had already made a high enough score to where I was exempt. I could have took those tests, but it would have been pointless because I already been exempted for those classes. The only test that I needed to take was for the classes where I needed to have a certain grade so that I can get my high school diploma. Same thing with some of these tests that the enemy tries to throw your way. Walk away from them. Walk away. For some of us, it's hard to walk away from family. But some of the tests that my family that put me in, I can walk away. When I see something is a test and I haven't got any type of spiritual inclination, spiritual motivation, spiritual discernment that I should be in that test, walk away. And some of the hardest people to walk away from is family. But don't put more tests on you than you have to be put on you anyway as a man of God and a woman of God simply because you refuse to walk away. I won't get through today. I will be back to continue discussing this is only a test. Remember, you can be victorious in every test that you encounter as long as you put God first and you know the word of God. You have been listening to Evangelist Dominique Moore of the Thompson Evangelistic Ministry called Anointed and Appointed. Tune in again to get more wisdom, knowledge, and encouragement from the word of God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Be blessed.